Hi, I'm uh, Ezra from Ezra, Ezra Builds Lego, and this is the Atalanta. Um, she is my pandemic child. Um, <laughs> I already had two of the regular ones, so I figured this was a better use of nine months. Um, she's a diesel punk flying pirate ship of my own design based off my own artwork. And uh, it was kind of like my dream project. I always wanted to build a pirate ship. I never had a pirate ship set as a kid. And I figured the only thing cooler than a pirate ship is a flying one. So I did a little bit of research um, on ship construction, rigging, and a little bit of design. Took some uh, key influences from like uh, Warhammer 40K, Treasure Planet was a big one, a little bit of Space Battleship Yamato, and then definitely my own like aesthetic input um, to create something that I, I hope is unique and stands out on her own um, but the overall result was a 208 centimeter uh, flying pirate ship complete interior LED lights technic play functions uh, viewable doors she has a removable mizzen mast section right here for viewing the interior so this section comes out has sliding doors and then inside you can view crew quarters, part of the mess and galley. Um, but the entire ship has a fully fleshed out interior, including the aft castle. The captain's wheel actually drives the ship rudder. Um, it's a little slow, 66% of the time it works every time, but it works. There's a lot of deflection. There you go. Nice. That was one of the hardest things to engineer on this ship, was the working rudder. Um, as a firing mortar, it has a working cargo ramp. Uh, the cargo crane for the uh, ship works as well. Uh, anchors in the front lower and raise. Mm, what else? Just tons of details. Tons of de <laughs> details and play features. I had, I had a lot of fun fleshing everything out and doing the rigging and all that other good stuff. When you started on this project, did you plan for it to be this large all along, or did you kind of grow as you added more elements to it? My goal was about five feet, and as I started to shape the hull, um, I found that in order to get the kind of contours and lines that I wanted based off my artwork, that it had to grow a little bit. So the end result was 82 inches, which I think is a little over six feet. I mean, it's certainly very imposing here. So talk about, uh, if you can, kind of the sails and more of that rigging section there because you've got all of this uh, you know, rope in there and the lines to kind of keep it all together. So the rigging is mostly cosmetic. Um, the idea behind the rigging and the sails was that, so the sails are actually full length. And when my lazy behind gets around to it, um, I'm going to put some rivets in the sails and set them up so that they can actually furl and unfurl. Because if you look closely at the yard arms, I put uh, pulley lines in here so that all the sails can actually be rolled and unrolled once I get around to putting rivets in them. Um, I took some time, uh, I'm an army veteran, so I don't know that much about ships. So I had to look up all this Navy type stuff on how to tie ropes and knots, but I tried to make them as accurate as possible. I took some liberties, of course, because ships don't fly. Um, but the end result I think I'm pretty happy with was rigging that looks relatively realistic. And once I finally get around to it, hopefully we'll have some sails that can go up and down and look pretty cool as well. Yeah. I mean, even in this style, it looks fantastic here. Another thing you mentioned was all the interiors. So talk about kind of some of those details that you can see inside there and what kind of scenes and minifigures you were able to include. So she has roughly a 40 plus minifigure crew with a few hidden Lego masters on board. Um, in the front, starting at the bottom, is the cargo hold, and that's actually a multi-level cargo hold with the ramp that goes up to the middle. It's viewable from this area right here, and then these doors lower into the same cargo area. Um, behind that, and it's continuous, so if you could actually get a camera in there, you can see all the way through the ship. Um, but in here we have the galley, and that's my wife's sig fig. Um, <laughs> she's with the food, of course. And then behind the galley, we have engineering. And engineering has the um, ether boilers, which keep the ship up in the air. 
And then the lower deck has the treasure hold, which is below the crew compartment or uh, cargo compartment down there. And then down here we have sort of some storage areas that are not easily viewable because of ship construction. And then below that we have a brig. Um, the gondola is a removable section for play and accessibility as well. Um, the next deck up has the upper areas of um, the forward gun rooms, the cargo area, the mess for the crew. Um, they're viewable in from the top. And then the stairwell goes all the way down to the bottom deck, and that's viewable from right here. Let me get this guy out of there for you. You can get a little case of vertigo looking down there. <laughs> no, that's fantastic, though, to just have so many details that you were able to include in here. So talk a little bit about the armaments of a flying ship like this. What, what were you able to include? So as far as her armaments go, she has four, I believe it's four um, defense guns. There's a top deck one, the what I call the suicide gun, the gondola turret, and then the tail gunner, like the Iron Maiden song. Um, <laughs> and those are for defense of the ship. And then she has her broadsides uh, for chasing down other ships, as well as her bow chasers, which are hidden behind a pair of doors up in the front. Um, she also has smoke grenade launchers, or what they would call cloud canisters, and a battering ram. And that pretty much rounds out her armament, as well as an assortment of crew. We've got a sniper up here, um, all the way on the top of the mizzen mast. And then we have just a miscellaneous amount of boarding crew and what have you. Um, the captain is the lioness. She's at the helm. And that's my own character. Very nice. One of the things that really kind of brings this build to life also is that the vehicles you've kind of attached around it here. So what are some of these other kind of flying vehicles you have? So I call these sky coursers. They're essentially flying motorcycles. Um, this is the captain's. It's, um, I think I called it a Camara. It's loosely based on the Ferrari 250 GTO, uh, especially with the red and the, the swell designs and stuff like that. Um, and then I have several others that are circling around the ship. Um, there's a black one that I wanted to have kind of like a very Harley style to it. There's a green one down there. The blue one hanging from the cradle on the bottom of the ship. Um, there's a very small one over there off the stand that has my son's minifig hanging off of it like an Ewok. That stole a speeder bike. <laughs> um, a little tribute to the Mandalorian one up on the front by the Airsick Unikitty. Um, I modified it into one of my Sky Coursers. And then just a few others kind of circling around. Um, they were sort of my idea. Uh, you know, everybody loves speeder bikes from Star Wars, right? So I wanted to incorporate something very similar in my, in my world. Um, but since my world is very analog, very diesel, I thought what better than to have a propeller-driven engine attached to a seat and have someone just hang on through the air. <laughs> Oh, perfect. I love it. And we've talked about the size of this, something like six feet long. Uh, do you know how many parts are in it in total? Have you been able to keep track? I didn't even bother to count, but based on BrickLink orders, I would guess at about 60,000. Yeah. A lot of gray in there. <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of dark gray, dark bluish gray. A lot of it. <laughs> a lot of gold, a lot of dark red, a lot of broken dark red went into the process, too. <laughs> You got to use everything, you know? Yeah, you really did. Um, I spent a lot of time. It took nine months total. So there was a lot of downtime waiting for parts after I broke something, waiting for something else. Um, and then a lot of sourcing strange stuff. Because, um, you know, I had a 25-year dark age before I built this. And I had only been building for a month or two when I started this project. So a lot of what I have, I didn't know what it was. And I was like, this is cool. I can use this. And just went with it. A lot of the arm pieces that are here in the, the wing frames are Technic stuff I'd never seen before. There's some, some mounting pieces down here in the bottom and also in the forward arms that I don't know what they're from. Couldn't tell you, but I love them. So what was transport and setup at the show like for this large build? Um, setup takes about 45 minutes, and honestly, most of setup is untangling the rigging. <laughs> uh, 
um, because at, this is our fourth show. So we've actually gotten into a pretty good groove with the whole thing. Um, once we pull her out of the car, we bring her in on a dolly, drop the stand, set her on the stand, and then just start putting everything together. My wife adds the crew while I untangle the rigging and she attaches the engines um, and distracts the children. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love it. Sounds like a good plan. Well, this is a fantastic build. Thanks so much for all the work you put into building as well as bringing it out to the show here. It's so impressive and really representing this kind of like steampunk, diesel punk type of genre that doesn't always have a lot of builds in most conventions. So I love to see a theme like this. It's absolutely hands down my favorite theme is diesel punk and the Atalanta is you know my pet project so it's it's really been a lot of fun to come out and help represent with steampunk and diesel punk yeah perfect we'll keep up the good work thanks man